Hello and welcome to another lecture. My name is Leon Sultan and I'm a teacher of AP Human Geography at Lincoln High School in San Francisco and this lecture is about von Thunen and that's pronounced von Thunen uh, and his theory of agricultural location. Uh, this is a pretty central topic for the unit on agriculture for AP Human Geography so let's get started. Okay, the author of this theory is named Johann Heinrich von Thunen. He was not a geographer, but instead he was an economist, uh, and he lived in Germany uh, between 1783 and 1850. So let's take a look at the model. Here's the model um, as uh, featured in the textbook, uh, Fuberg, Gabli, Anderson. And as we can see, um, as I annotated, uh, I would like students to draw this model in their notes. There's really no substitute for having the model drawn. So of the model, we can see in the middle is the black dot, which represents the central city. And this model is going to predict agricultural activity, okay? Where different types of agricultural activity are going to take place in relationship to the central city or the, the black dot that's the center of the model. So the first type of uh, agricultural activity is here the market and gardening and dairying zone. And then the second type is the increasingly extensive field crops like grains. Now in between you have the green zone, the number two, which is a forest or a buffer zone. So let's take a look a little closer at the model. We see our black dot in the middle is our central city. Then we have our market gardening, our forest, extensive field crops, and then finally ranching and livestock. Now the whole idea behind this model is that crops are located for, to maximize profit and minimize perishability. So what is perishability? This term perishable is very important to understand if you're going to understand the models. So to be perishable means to be likely to decay or go bad quickly. Some examples of goods or um, food items that are per highly perishable is milk. Milk does not last very long. Another example would be lettuce. Lettuce goes bad within a, a few days in your refrigerator. Imagine lettuce unrefrigerated during the time of von Tunen. As well as strawberries. Again, strawberries are highly perishable. As soon as you pick those things, you want to eat them quickly before they go bad. So perishability or how perishable a good is will predict how far away it is located from the market uh, or central city. So the first part of this question, which you would see on an FRQ, would be identify and explain the location of this activity in relationship to the central city using the von Thunen model. So I take a look at the picture and the activity, and what I see is this is grain farming, okay? What type of grain? Well, this picture is wheat, but this could be substituted for any type of grain. It could be for corn, it could be for millet or any other types of grain, okay? So if I look at this picture and I look at the model, where would this be located in the model? Take a second and look at the model. Okay, this would be in the third ring, okay? The ring, the yellow ring marked three. The reason is because extensive agriculture occurs far from the city since it requires a lot of land and produces crops that are not perishable. Items like corn and wheat and other grains, they do not spoil. They can be stored for a long period of time, so they do not need to be located near the central market. So in order to maximize profit, a grain farmer is going to locate far from the city in order to have a large farm, a big area, to produce more grain. Now the second question in this FRQ would be, identify and discuss the location of this activity in relationship to the central city using the von Tönen model. So we take a look at this activity here and we can see beautiful vegetables grown, but these are garden type vegetables. These are not, these are not grain crops, okay? So I can see lettuce, I see carrots, I see sunflowers and cucumbers and kale beautiful uh, market vegetables and I want to look at my model and see what ring are these located in. So I can see quickly from the model that they'd be in the first ring or ring one, very close to the central city. Now the reason is intensive agriculture or market gardening as well as dairying occurs very close to the city because these products are perishable and they require a lot less land. So the next question is, why is this model no longer applicable to the present day? So I want you to think about California. California is the United States' most important agricultural state. Something like about 50% of all fruits and vegetables are grown here in California. Why is this mo model no longer applicable to the present day? Well, let's take a look at the map of California. For one, there is no more forest ring. Okay, if I look at the Montunin model, the third or the second ring is, is the forest. We don't have a forest ring 
The reason is we've cut down almost all of our native forest and we use gas for fuel. We no longer use forest wood to burn for fuel. We also have refrigeration and better transportation. We have large refrigerated trucks that can go long distances very quickly. Von Tunen did not have this. Okay, He lived several hundred years ago and so they did not have refrigeration and transportation in the same way that we do today. This makes it possible to do market gardening and dairying very far away from the city. Additionally, we also now have a global marketplace. Fruits and vegetables and other foods can now be exported internationally. As you'll notice when you go to the supermarket and you're buying bananas that are produced in the Caribbean, Central America, or South America, or when you buy apples in the middle of wintertime that are imported from Chile. But is this model no longer applicable to the present day? Let's take a closer look at our map of California here. So we have the Bay Area, the city being San Francisco, Oakland, San Jose area. And then if we think about the Von Tunen's model on a larger scale and look at a market gardening and dairying area, we can actually see that in the North Bay, that is where a lot of vegetables are produced, as well as the South Bay area around Watsonville. That is where a lot of our strawberries and other uh, nice vegetables are produced. And then the, the second ring, the extensive agriculture ring, overlaps with the Central Valley. So we can see that even though Von Tunen's model is not completely applicable today, there is a little bit of resonance that it still has. Now we're going to move on to part two of this lecture where we compare Von Tunen's model to Burgess's concentric zone model of the city. So let's take a look at these two models and how they compare and contrast. The first thing to understand about these two models is the scale is completely different on these two models. Von Tunen's model the entire Burgess model can fit in that little black dot in the middle of Von Tunen's model. So very important to understand that Von Tunen is not diagramming a city. He's diagramming the areas outside of the city, where Burgess primarily is diagramming the city itself. So that's a big difference in the model is, is the scale. What do these models have in common, and how are they different besides the scale? Well, let's think this over. The first fundamental difference is they are predicting land use patterns in terms of agriculture for Von Tunen and in terms of urban land use for Burgess. So Von Tunen is predicting land use patterns based on agricultural land use and Burgess is based on urban land use. Now that being said, there are three major common assumptions between the two models. Number one is that we're talking about building a model on a flat surface. We're also talking about a single CBD or single market area. There's no competing market area or else these models will just simply won't work. Finally, the third assumption is that transportation costs are equal. We don't have um, big rivers to go over or things in our way. So all the transportation costs are equal and that's why we get these concentric circles as we do in both Von Tunen and Burgess. So in both models, how does location affect land use. Now it's very important to understand that it's all about relationship to land use and the center of the model. It's all about predicting how close something will be to the center. So in both models, near the center, the CBD in Burgess or the market city in Von Tunen, we have intensive land use. So what does intensive land use mean? Intensive land use in terms of agriculture would be planting things like strawberries, right? Using the land very intensively. Um, and in terms of the Burgess model, intensive land use is high-rise buildings or building up. So this is intensive land use, right? We don't have these large suburban estates in the middle of a city. However, in the periphery of these models, we have extensive land use. So, for example, in the Burgess model, we have suburbs, right? Large homes that require large plots of land. And then in the Von Tunen model, we have extensive land use in the form of grain crops. The reason why we have location in relationship to the central city or the CBD um, in both of these models is a theory called bid-rent theory. Okay, so bid-rent theory basically says as you move away from the center or the CBD, land prices will go down. So that makes sense because as you go closer to the center, land prices are more expensive, so you build up instead of out, right? You, your agriculture is intensive instead of extensive. Now in terms of bid-rent bid theory, here's another way to look at it. So we see that here in the middle, the rent per square meter is the highest, 
and as we move away from the middle, then the rents go down. So again, in the middle, close to the CBD, you have intensive land use, high-rise apartment buildings, or farming strawberries, things like this. And as we go away from the center, we have extensive land use. So we have suburban homes, or in the case of agricultural, we have grain crops. That concludes this lecture. Thank you very much for watching. Please uh, remember to subscribe, to leave comments, and to like the lectures.